Alright, hello guys. Today I'm presenting you our sixth episode of Winter Thoughts. Today we're going to be talking about the Pacific North American Oscillation, the PNA. I'm going to be teaching you guys about this oscillation so that from now on, when somebody says PNA, you guys know exactly what they're talking about. But before I get started with this video though, I would ask you to subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description, especially the Instagram, which we've been doing really cool stuff on. If you tag us in photos and videos there, we will be sharing some of those on the Instagram and in the weekly forecasts here on the YouTube channel where I'll be talking about your vote, your photos and videos, which is super cool. Now, first things first, we're going to be looking at what a positive PNA would look like. I'm going to be showing you two different graphics from two different sources just to show you guys uh, what to what to look for when we when we see this type of pattern. Now, this first one is actually just coming from analogs, which is really really cool. Uh, and a positive Pacific North American oscillation would be positive temperatures and positive heights in the Pacific North American regions. If believe it or not, um, so what we rate what we rate this on is a positive would be again some positive temperatures or heights around the west coast of the United States and the west coast of Canada as well as into Alaska. That's what we look for. And a lot of times, especially when paired with a negative NAO, which we talked about that in one of our previous winter thoughts, you can go check that out if you don't know what that means. Uh, but when, when those two are paired together, we see a significant chance at troughing and below average temperatures within the eastern United States. So what this can cause, again, a positive PNA paired with a negative NAO can really create some potent cold air within the eastern United States. And this is a pattern we frequently see happen uh, pretty much every winter. We do see some times when we do have these two paired up together. Last winter was a, a big exception. We hardly saw any negative NAO last winter, and that was a big player, and us not really seeing a lot of cold temperatures in the extreme eastern United States. So that was kind of what that was. Now here's a second graphic here, and you can see that a lot of times, I, I want you to focus in here near Alaska, we see a deep low near the Aleutian Islands, and really what this is, again, both of these troughs here in the near the Aleutian Islands as well as in the eastern United States are both caused by this blocking happening on the west coast of Canada and the western United States. So a lot of times we want to see that western Pacific and central North Pacific region be having lower heights. That's going to create, again, this big ridge up against the western United States and western Canada. And that, again, forces more cold air into the eastern United States more times than not. Now, here's what a negative PNA would look like, and you can see it's almost the opposite here. We see positive uh, heights here near the Aleutian Islands and Alaska, and then we see negative heights there up against the western United States. Uh, and on this frame, we do see a uh, we do see a positive NAO as well. We see big time negative heights there along Greenland and Canada in between those two. So, with these two paired together. We get big time warmth and positive heights in the eastern United States. And if you get too much consistency of this pattern within a month or a season, you're looking at a very, very warm month or season for the eastern United States. So that can really ruin a lot of things. These are short term oscillations. So any winter forecast is subject to, you know, busting just because of this. If if these types of weird anomalies happen where we see a positive or a negative PNA and positive NAO consistently through a winter, you can't really forecast that to happen besides sea surface temperatures, but that sometimes doesn't always tell the whole story. Now here's your second frame, which has a bit more information on what a negative PNA looks like. Again, we do see a positive NAO on this as well, but you can see big time troughing over the Western, uh, Western North America there. So Western Canada, Western United States, there and the storm track. This brings storms into Canada a lot of the time as well. I want to men or into California. I wanted to mention and then back up north through the Great Lakes and then back out through New England. Uh, but we do have a big time ridge there for again near the Aleutian Islands and basically the entire North Pacific there. And and really this is just not what I would consider a favorable pattern for the Eastern United States as far as PNA is concerned. The Pacific. Uh, we have to keep a close eye on this, and this can really be the teller in a lot of patterns. And, I mean, this oscillation is very, very important. This is one of the bigger ones, and if this one isn't in a favorable phase, it can mess up everything. We're about to see a negative NAO take place, but we're going to have a big-time negative PNA, 
and that's going to ruin our entire pattern for the next uh, little while. So we're going to talk about that uh, right now, actually. So we're looking at our current PNA observed as well as the forecast here from the National Weather Service and some of their models. And you can see we're in a positive PNA right now, surprisingly, but this looks to go back neutral and then pop back very positive and then go very negative around the 10th of October. Keep in mind that is very, very far out and things are subject to change. But from what I'm seeing on the ensemble models as well as other models, a negative PNA coming up you know, for at least the next little while, a negative PNA pattern looks to take hold of everything going on. And, and these oscillations can switch on a dime. So I don't want to say for certain that that's what's going to happen. But that looks like the most uh, plausible outcome as of right now that we will have a negative PNA pattern, which again is the one where we have a big time trough in the Western United States, as well as a consistent ridge out there in the central and eastern United States, which I know is not what a lot of you want to hear. But that's just the facts. That's what we're having looking to take place. Now we're going to be looking at the GFS model first things first. This is right about now. Uh, this is for this morning on Saturday. And you can see it, it looks all over the place. The You can't really tell what's going on in the Pacific Ocean here. We do have some positive heights there along the west coast of Canada, but some negative heights there just on shore of the east or the western United States. We definitely have a big time ridge in the eastern United States though, so I would say this is leaning more towards a neutral or negative PNA here. This doesn't look good. I guess technically it is a positive PNA, but the pattern does not look that way. Now, moving on to hours 90, you can see we almost look like we're getting a really good positive PNA look here. Um, you can see those warmer heights. And again, in those oranges, I, I didn't mention this actually, in those oranges and reds, that's positive heights. So if you heard me mention that earlier, that's what I'm talking about right now. When we see these enter the Western United States, typically that's the look of a positive PNA. And this is probably what the models are looking at or the previous graph that we just looked at. That's probably when it pops back very positive for a little bit. That's probably this. Uh, and you can see there's almost a trough trying to enter the central United States and head into the eastern United States, but not so fast. By hours 174, you can see we go back into this very, very negative PNA look. Um, we have very positive heights there near the Aleutian Islands, just to the east of the Aleutian Islands, right over Canada. Anchorage is right in there, so expect very, very warm temperatures if you are there in Alaska. And then we see a big-time ridge for the eastern United States still by the 28th of September and a huge trough there for the western United States, just crippling ridge there for the eastern United States and big-time trough. We could be expecting some Rocky Mountain and higher elevation snows out there for quite a while. And here's the GEFS, which is the ensemble GFS model for the 3rd of October. And we still just have this very, very uh, big ridge there for Alaska. And then a big trough there for the western United States and Canada. And then a big ridge for the eastern United States once again. Uh, and then here I wanted to show real quick the three big ensemble models and just try to spot the difference here as I go along. This I found this incredible as I was looking at what all the other ensemble models were showing. I mean, this has me scratching my head. It's just incredible how much agreement we have here uh, at two, uh, 240 hours. First things first, here is the European ensemble model. Very classic negative PNA look. Big time ridge and high heights there for the Aleutian Islands as well as some areas in Alaska. And then we have a big time trough there for the western United States and then a massive ridge for the eastern and central United States. Now I'll try to spot the difference. I just switched. You saw things maybe move an inch and now we're on to our Canadian ensemble model. Again, huge ridge there for the Aleutian Islands, big time trough there for the western United States and then a big ridge for the eastern United States. Once again, try to spot the difference. Again, 240 hours out, we're moving on to the GFS ensemble model. And again, things just move ever so slightly. But all three of the major ensemble models at hours 240, October 1st, have the same exact pattern look. A very, very negative PNA pattern look. We have this huge ridge out there for Alaska and the Aleutian Islands, and then a big time trough for the Western United States, and then a huge ridge for the Eastern United States. Seem familiar? Well, because all three 
Ensemble models have the exact same pattern. Doesn't mean it's going to happen for sure, but it is incredible at this distance out that we do have three of the major ensemble models, the three biggest ensemble models, showing the same exact thing. I mean, a lot of you probably don't know, but that is not usually how it is. We usually do not see that much agreement that far out. That's 10 days out. We usually do not see that much agreement. So we're going to have to keep an eye and see if this is going to switch or if we're actually going to see this very negative p a pattern last that long into October. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Again, I will be having an October forecast come out, obviously, as we approach October. And then a first half of October forecast to give you guys a little bit of a shorter range look at what you could expect um, in, for the first half of October there. And tomorrow's upload is going to be our weekly forecast. I'm not going to be at the house, so I'm going to be making this tonight. I'm going to be making your weekly forecast and uploading it tomorrow, so stay tuned for that one. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.